Okay. That's nice. And uh, Rohini, which grades are you teaching? It's HM, so I'm assuming you are the headmistress. No, ma'am. It's a Hiraman. Hi, ma'am. Oh, Myself. Okay. okay. Hi. <laughs> okay. So I am also from Karnataka. I also teach uh, 8th, 9th and 10th grade uh, students, both okay. in Kannada medium and English medium. And oh, okay. uh, myself okay. and Gulzar are from the same district, ma'am. We are uh, friends. Oh, nice, nice. That's good. Cool. Nice uh, to meet you. Shash, yeah, Shashi, should we start or are we going to get some more participants? There are 28 unassigned participants is what I can still see. We'll do one thing. We'll just wait for two minutes more. Till... Sure, because there are quite a couple of people in the main part who have not yet joined any room. I can see like 24 and 28. Okay, so have you all been using uh, any ICT tools, any AR, VR, or anything of that sort? Karnataka uses lots of tools, right? So, what have you all been using? Uh, I'm using Fetch simulations for the uh, chemistry, for nuclear reactions, okay. all those uh, to show the all those things. Yeah. Some videos, and I have also prepared. Okay. Uh, calcium. calcium for the periodic table. Yes, me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so good that you like good because we are interacting so that I won't repeat the fetch simulation then because you are already using it, right? Okay, anything else that uh, you want to know more from uh, this session? And since we are only three of us, it will, it's going to be like a <laughs> fireside chat. I want to know more about the virtual labs uh, in uh, chemistry experiments. Uh, but you're already using PET, you said, right? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, but uh, uh, to demonstrate the experiments, I want some more information about that. Um, is there any augmented reality videos like that for the chemistry? Okay. Augmented reality is there. Yes. Okay. I will try to bring up those as well. So, would you like to introduce yourself? We are just discussing uh, about each other so that we know a little bit more because uh, in the sense, uh, our Madam, both the teachers have been using actually uh, calcium and pet simulations. So I will not be showing that. I'll be changing it just now. So they just told me what they want more. They want to know more. So would you like to share something about you? Girish, sir. Uh, she's Giri, asking sir. you. Giri, sir, respond. Hello. Sir, we can't hear you. Uh, can you just Hello. tell us? Richard is also from Karnataka, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, that I could understand. But uh, if he has been using, because you are writing KN, right? So that's understood. But uh, sir, what do you, uh, what are you using already? Are you using any VR, any AR, any labs in teaching chemistry? I think we can't hear him, or is it only me who can't hear? Our no, ma'am, he is not talking. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, so I have started sharing the screen and let's get started. Uh, 
So since, like I said, we are only a very small group here, so let's keep it like a chat. Let's keep it like a fireside chat. Actually, it's nice winter here. Uh, so let's think of a campfire and, you know, like we keep it a little bit informal as compared to the previous sessions that I have been taking where we have the number of people who uh, come into this breakout room is much higher. Okay, so uh, as we are going to talk about the AR, VR, and since you both are already using it, you said. So I would first like to know whether you have been uh, familiarized and are you familiar with the uh, alternative academic calendar? Yeah, it's great to have the video on. Yeah, you can keep the video on. It's fine if you don't mind and if your bandwidth allows. Even Gulzar also, you can also switch it on. I mean, because we're a small group, you know how I'm just having a, a quite a touch kind of a personal touch. Yeah. Have you heard of the alternate academic calendar and are you using it? I have not heard, ma'am. No, ma'am. Okay. Okay. So uh, let us first see that how do we use all this using, I mean, Though we need to use the AR and VR, but there is a need for this alternative academic calendar as well. Now, what happens in science is, especially in chemistry, uh, um, and of course, then we are going to go to the websites and the apps like you have asked me to and the ones that I had planned to show you. So first, what we'll do is we'll take up the ones that I had already planned. And then towards the end, I'll take up the ones that you have asked for and uh, that we can do just now. Okay. And yes, the tips will be there throughout this uh, session. And please feel free to stop me anytime and just ask me any question that you have. Don't keep it for the end. Okay. So now what is this alternative academic calendar? So just a main thing that we need to understand is how do we integrate all of this, right? Now, as chemistry people, and as you have said that you have also created some videos based on and use some pet simulations. My honest question to you is, do you think that the students will be able to perform the experiment after they see the video? Not uh, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, so I want to know, uh, like, you have created the videos, right? You have done so much for the students. And still you say that, no, they will not be able to perform. So why is that? Because real experience is different from uh, virtual. Perfect. And anything else? Uh, uh, sometimes they may not um, uh, catch the post points in the video mm -hmm. and uh, they may uh, they may not um, uh, continue as uh, uh, explained in the video okay have you found in these past two years of the pandemic what about their practical skills what about their lab skills what is uh, science without lab oh ma'am it came too low that we can't uh, <laughs> imagine also <laughs> Yeah, because many of the teachers with whom I have interacted, especially those who teach class 12, they have, uh, and I can really understand this because they have students coming in who have never held a test tube in their hand. And now we are going to add concentrated acids, right? And so the handshakes, you don't actually know uh, I mean, the students actually don't know what is the end point, how to hold the burette, uh, which pink is baby pink, and uh, actually sucking up the pipette and taking out 10 ml is, is taking a very long, 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 long time is what the teachers have been experiencing this. So what are your experiences uh, about this? Because the 8th, 9th, 10th grade do also have practicals, right? And yeah. Yes, ma'am. Um, eight, nine, ten students are, are having the practicals. Uh, what uh, after the pandemic uh, pandemic uh, situation, um, the observation skill uh, is uh, very much lower. And then uh, um, uh, recording purpose means uh, what they observe, they have to uh, make a table and record. No, All those skills are a little bit no, um, not up to the mark. 
and second one uh, the basic skills like holding how to hold test tube how, how to be careful while dealing with acids or, or any uh, strong bases like that they actually don't know at all and um, uh, uh, some uh, some chemical operators they are not uh, even seen also not in the picture also so that is the thing yes very nicely you have put up the points because uh... They really don't know. And this is not only about the pandemic, but if we try to just stick to the AR and VR, then this is going to happen. Okay? Like, come on, I teach ICT. I teach ICT enabled things. And at the same time, I'm saying this, that we can't stick to only this. is because you really can't learn science uh, doing this. You may understand but understanding is only one component of learning, right? We also need to apply. We also need to analyze. But the first and the foremost is we also need to experiment. And we need to have those lab skills that we call as handling of a apparatus. And without that, science education is not complete, right? So, of course, AR and VR makes it easy to understand. Uh, you can ask the students to repeat the experiment many a times. Uh, it just makes it very interesting also, especially for those particular parts and those particular topics which are a little bit different and difficult to understand, like furnace. So how does, how we can't have a video of the furnace. So obviously we will need to have a simulation. That makes it interesting. It also makes it more tangible, uh, like an atom, what actually happens inside the atom? How does spectroscopy actually take place? Uh, what are the basic uh, components or what are the basic uh, processes in metallurgy when it goes into the mine? So for a student to, to imagine a five meter tall blast furnace that goes on for five years is very difficult. And obviously we don't have any video within, within the furnace. So simulation becomes the most, or the virtual reality becomes the most easy and um, most appropriate thing that makes this abstract concept very tangible. But like you have said, the practical experience is definitely missing. And also, this is something that I have found myself when I started observing the uh, students. And when you say practical experience, of course, like uh, Rohini had said, uh, okay, I won't say Rohini ma'am and Gulzar ma'am. I hope it's okay with you. Uh, so, no, because that that is just, that, that just doesn't come like that. We all are so used to in our uh, place to address each other by the first names that uh, it, 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 I'll have to be very conscious there. Okay. So the practical experience means observation, writing down uh, your journal, what you're actually seeing how to hold a particular thing. Like, uh, is the buret supposed to be, uh, you know, manipulated with the right hand? No, it's supposed to be by the left hand. And then you don't know how to do it with the left hand. So uh, all that is there. And also, what is the seriousness and reality that I find missing is, I found missing amongst the students because you are so used to the simulation. It doesn't matter that even if you add, let us say 10 grams of sodium metal into the water, it's just going to explode. It's going to explode more. But in reality, if you take a small piece, that also is going to give a pop-up sound. And then what will happen if you take a big chunk and put it into water? Because in our chemistry labs, we have got lots of chemicals that are potentially harmful. So because it's simulation and simulation actually doesn't cause pain, it doesn't allow us to empathize and think in a serious manner that my God, what can this uh, lead to? Students just are too careless. We say careless, but it's not actually careless. They just don't seem to understand the seriousness of handling the chemicals. They don't understand the reality that my God, if at all I am going to burst something it may look just as an explosion, but it may damage pipes, if not human beings. And then that pipes is going to damage pipes is going to cause a problem in the laboratory. So all these things are totally missing amongst the students. And of course, like we have said very often, that the skills are missing. So then what do we do? For that particular purpose, we have the alternative academic calendar, which was actually uh, brought out by the NCRT itself since April 2020. It's there on the website of NCRT. 
uh, it suggests alternative experiments to be done at home. So whatever we are actually doing in our um, chemistry lab, what is the alternative way to do it at home? So suppose if I'm going to show you something, you will sense my students, something about using an AR or a VR, what is the real experiment that they can do at home using chemicals around at home? Because if anyone believes and loves science, then we all will be definitely saying this, that science is not in the lab. It is there at homes. It is everywhere around. And we need to get it out of the labs. You don't need actually a test tube and a petri dish and a beaker. A glassware of your house can actually serve the same purpose. right? So if we are actually going to bring chemistry back into our homes or rather and make students understand that chemistry is everywhere, we need to get into that particular part. So the first thing is once we identify the concept of the AR and the VR uh, tools or whatever that we are using, we have to essentially follow it up with a do-it-yourself. Now this do-it-yourself is a lot of things that we can do. And critical thinking should be a part of the DIY either as the experiment itself or maybe afterwards, after they do this do-it-yourself part, they come back to the class and then we have a huge discussion on that. Okay. Uh, I will be sharing things that I have experienced, but have you done some DIY kind of things with your students is what I'm trying to know. Have your students done certain experiments at home and have brought them to you? Or you have suggested and they have performed? Yes, ma'am. Um, the, um, the, uh, the acid in water conducts uh, electricity. That experiment uh, using uh, lemon juice, water mm -hmm. and a uh, glass and uh, uh, with uh, a small wires and uh, LED bulb, uh, my student conducted. And also the SAR solution um, the means ionic, uh, uh, yes, ionic, yeah, ionic uh, solution conducts electricity in liquid state. That experiment they have conducted, and um, acid base like uh, uh, litmus paper have given. Uh, they have performed at home with the help of litmus paper. The uh, find out acid and base like that. Uh, some little bit experiments have given. Okay, nice. Similarly. Uh, all my students to perform the paper chromatography and also mm -hmm. uh, as you told that blast furnace uh, they, we can't do the we can't show the blast furnace uh, therefore I told them to take the um, red oxide and uh, so, uh, so uh, that is detergent and taking the math sticks we can uh, separate the iron content from the red oxide that is a simple experiment so uh, we, uh, how we can extract the uh, iron from the in a small quantity so the, those uh, uh, things uh, those simple experiments i told to do uh, in the home ah, fantastic so uh, how did they observe and how did they write how did you know that they have performed they used to send the, uh, even photos and the videos to the WhatsApp groups. So have you like kept them? Some of them are there. Uh, but uh, during the pandemic, they used to send those. Uh, so but have you like saved? Have you saved those photographs and uh, whatever they sent? Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, I have to uh, actually. Say once again. Yeah. So I changed actually. my mobile. So I, <laughs> I lost everything. <laughs> Okay. Actually, uh, we made a student WhatsApp group, ma'am. After they left the school, no, actually that group will be dissolved. So whole uh, videos and some of them I kept in my, this one um, uh, memory card and uh, like that phone changes. So all the data. Yes. Be yeah, yeah. Okay. So, but this is like very nice uh, uh, experiments that you have done. I would just want you to take it up further even this year, even if the pandemic is over, these should be taken up in this year also and then you can save it up. Um, and then uh, please get back to me and tell you how to actually draft it and make a manual out of it so that you can uh, 
publish it afterwards. Okay, so uh, I will be sharing my uh, email ID with you all, and then once you do this, just note it down and then send it to me. Okay, so now this critical thinking part comes, and because you talked about pH, I have one uh, experience that I'll share with you all uh, with uh, my students. Now, this is quite some time back, quite some time back. And that is there on uh, teachersofindia.org also. I think it must be 10 years or more that I have uh, done this, uh, the pH paper thing. So exactly like Rohini said, I had given out the pH papers and it's 10 years back. So there was no question of pandemic or anything. And I had told them that, yeah, go ahead and think what are, whatever you have in your house and just break up the pH papers and test and bring it back to the class. So uh, the critical thinking part comes here where students had actually, uh, they had to write what is the pH, right? Because as per the color change, the universal indicator, that bottle thing. And we also have that scale. So I had given the scale also to them. So they found that a very popular bathing soap uh, is having the same pH as that of the dishwash. Uh, the dishwash bar and they all were like very surprised that my god we are using the same pH so uh, it's like it's so harsh and the advertisements don't make it seem that it is that harsh and also uh, there was a student who had told me that uh, he had tested with its saliva okay the pH of the saliva before food and after food and also the saliva of his pet dog and that led us to the discussion of how the uh, cavities, that is the dental caries, how they happen inside our mouth. And does really uh, the, uh, the toothpaste or, you know, you get those uh, chewing gum type of a thing also that you eat in your mouth that prevents the dental caries. One is that which causes whiteness to the teeth, that is that dental white. There is something similar to that, uh, which prevents the dental cavities. So we were actually think, uh, discussing whether it really is possible that this happens. So such type of critical thinking part should be made compulsory while they write. Maybe we can make them write this in the journals. And also ask the discussion. Uh, we can summarize the discussion. Like I said, you can just get back to me. I'll show you how it has to be actually written down so that you can get it published properly as a set of experiments to be done at home. Uh, now, because of all this, what will happen is the whole purpose of science, that is critical thinking, right? That comes into the picture. Skills, that comes into the picture because they are actually testing out things, right? And uh, it can be done with something so similar, I mean, so simple because the best part of chemistry is many of the experiments you can do at home. It's not... Uh, it doesn't require a lot of things like you may have a dukla atta, you may have a idli fermentation, the batter and then you can have a critical discussion about uh, what is the difference between the fermentation of a dukla and the fermentation of the idli batter. Is it different? Is it same? What is the agent? Uh, when do you use it in the bread and the naan? Even that is fermentation. Even idli is fermentation but then what is the difference between both of them, right? So there's so much of actual discussion that can happen in chemistry when uh, you take it like this. That is when you make a lot of DIY things and when you make a lot of critical thinking part uh, as a part and parcel of your academic calendar. That is why we call it as an alternative academic calendar. And though we are going to see in the next part uh, some ARVR tools, but just let's not include only the AR, VR tools and the videos because then it is becoming uh, passive, right? Students are only going to observe and they don't observe with that intention. It is just passive watching. It doesn't go to that observation level. And we actually want what is that observation level, right? So uh, though we will be taking up now uh, a different type of AR, VR, but what you include as this critical inquiry is your skill. How I will be doing it is different. How you will be doing it is going to be different. And even if all of us are teaching the same subject, maybe very 
very close to each other, maybe in the same school also. Even then, we are going to leave our own marks. Okay, that is our signature style. And that signature style, it's something that we should preserve. That is what makes you as your class. It's your individual sign, right? Yaro, you want to say something? No? Okay. No, because your hand came up, so I thought you're unmuting yourself. So the, uh, we have to start with asking them to think. So we have to give them some prodding activities. So what will happen? What do you think? And then we give them some AR and VR stuff. We ask them to share what they have done, like you have already done it. And then we give them a DIY activity, bring it back to the class for the discussion. And then we also ask them whether they have any alternative activity for the same. Okay. And now let's go to the websites and the apps. So we have so many of them, right? And because you said that you wanted something more, uh, yes, we have something more. What we'll do is we'll take one by one and you can uh, note down whatever you wish to note down. You can also just take a screenshot of this and uh, keep it, yeah. Which is like very nice to say, yes, we are doing that. Okay, now, is this what you are able to see? Uh, the con code. Okay. So now if you see here, you have lots of experiments. Of course, uh, you have physics, you have biology, biotech, nanotech also. And we are going to go to chemistry. And things are there as per the subjects, as per the topics. You have reactions, you have dissolving, salt. Many a times, this particular part requires molecular workbench that you will have to download. Okay? Uh, because it's more... We, if you see this, then you will also need a Java applet to be downloaded. And once you download, what we will do is towards the end of the session, I'll ask you to download and then actually explore. So first, let me show you all the uh, all this, all the websites that we have. And then you can go ahead and download and see if you can do that. But this is what you have here. And all, almost, almost all of them are uh, available. You know, if you do this, Okay, almost all of them are using molecular workbench, so you will have to use that. But let's just go back to this one and let's check. Check, check, check. Yeah. So this is the lab exchange, and I'm going to pick up the subject area of chemistry. As you see, you have like more than 2,000 of the topics that are there, resources and topics. So I'll just pick the first one because it just is the first. Nothing more. Now, uh, simulation. I will take up one by one and I will explain how to, how would I uh, like conduct a critical thinking part? So the first one is, I think you must have done this because this is actually related with FET. So I don't know if you have done this or not. Now this is about the pH that we have been talking about. So I place my pH scale here and I put my, I don't want to put water because water is very easy. I will try to put the battery acid, which we will not be able to do. I mean, we can't expect the student to do this. So I'm just adding it here and I'm asking them to see what is the pH that they are seeing. And then if I go on adding water, what happens? And uh, this is the exact point where we bring in a lot of discussion. Now the discussion is not only about uh, basically, see, when we are showing them AR and VR, let us make like two things very clear. One, we can have it as a demonstration of this, but what I prefer is I show the demonstration and I also give the link to the students. 
and ask them to experiment on their own and come back and tell what have they observed. So before we give it to them, what I like to make them understand is this is not a play. Otherwise, if we don't, don't give them, it's just a game for them, like do anything and everything. So what I'll ask them to do is, I ask them to observe that what happens here. Does that mean that if I'm going to add water to this? Now, I'm also going to ask them that if I choose something else, does, I mean, is the pH almost same or it's not same? And what happens actually, what is the meaning of if I'm going to add this, the pH decreases means what? The pH increases means what? And also, like we were doing this battery acid while apart. So usually, I just stop here and I ask them, before I give it to them, uh, I do this. I ask them that, what do you mean by this pH 1? So pH 1 means very highly acidic. And then I ask them, that, okay, do you, uh, I mean, come on, I come from Mumbai, right? So all students are very Bollywoodish students. So I ask them, like, do you have anything that you remember when acid becomes very corrosive or something? And then um, they definitely talk about Mogambo Kushua and, you know, when he used to ask people to jump into the acid. So acid is very corrosive. Then this is also the time when I can introduce them to certain parts which we as chemistry teachers should make them aware of. So when we are doing this, then I make it a point to ask, to talk to them about the uh, acid attack victims, how it must be. And also then uh, if, why we should not throw the batteries, uh, be it car battery or the normal battery directly into the trash, how even a slight trace of acid because we are throwing it away. It is like so highly acidic. How it is going to corrode the soil and the organisms that are present in the soil. So we are also including social aspect. We are also including environmental aspect. We have a discussion about it here. And then I give them the link. Then I ask them to note down what uh, elements they have used here out of the ones that are there. Note down the difference that, that how much water when you add makes it, you know, a little bit less uh, acidic. So, in fact, when you're doing this, I'm asking them to do the N1V1 is equal to N2V2. Okay, because that's actually how much of volume the water is being added and how the normality of the acid is going to be changed. So, I'm introducing them this concept of calculation of normality and molarity with respect to volumes, but this is the first step. And then it can go ahead and ask them to do the same things with the chemicals that are around in the house and then come back again with it. So uh, I have had like real questions where even I did not know the answers to that. And then we had to search that when we were talking about this battery acid, a few of the students said, then ma'am, what happens to the button cells? You know, those button type of batteries. How much acid is there? And then we actually did a project where we, uh, where the students actually found out that what is the content of acid in the different types of cells, battery cells that we use in uh, daily life. So be it a car battery, be it a, those in the watches and the clocks. But Actually, how much acid is present? Is there any acid present? Or do we have any batteries that do not have acids? And then we went with the alkaline batteries, the dura cell. And then is that harmful? Uh, are, because as good as the acidic batteries are going to be harmful, even highly alkaline substances are also going to cause harm to the environment. So then this is where you're going to have the critical thought and the analysis. And believe me, the students enjoy it that much more than uh, what we normally teach in the class and then the chapter is just over like this because they already know the concepts and so when you're dealing with the chapter it's just like a oh we know this oh okay we know this and then we have to just tell them that okay you know this it's nice and when this comes as the exam then you have to write this and give this as the example so that's how it goes uh, when let me do this
want to show you. But I'll just take you uh, to a few more and then we will do this. So uh, this is about the ions that I think uh, Rohini was talking about in the water you add salt. So this is basically a stepwise. So it's like about the light charges and the unlike charges repairing. And uh, so we actually ask the students at how much, like at what distance does this happen? At what distance does the attraction to far ends, does it happen? No. Then when does that begin? Is the, you know, the distance of that minimum, uh, the bond length, when the bond will be stable. And that's how we actually introduce those particular concepts. And you know, it just goes on. And the best part here is you come to know that there are 27 in this tutorial and how the one end of the periodic table what consolidated and this is like one very small tutorial very initial I think this can work nice with class 8 and because this is um, in the sense uh, you can give this particular part you can ask them to time themselves and then you can ask uh, like here they are you only can ask to that and actually to do it will take you ahead with how the ions and the way in which it would interact with the world and uh, why it solve this gas and so on. So it makes the uh, very abstract concept also a little bit more concrete and tangible when they are going to see this. Then I will take you to another one which is, I think you will be happy with this. Have you tried the OLAPs? Okay, if you haven't, then you should, because this is something which is excellently done. Okay, now this is as per the grade, so that helps you a lot. You don't have to grade your head whether this is suitable for my class or not. And uh, I will pick up something at random. I, even I will not know whether this is correct or not. So here we have uh, the simulator. Okay, I think I should go back because we are not teaching class 7, right? So we're teaching class 8, 9, 10. Let's go to something from class 9. That will be easier. Okay. So let's pick up this from class nine. Now the best part of OLABS is you have the theory. So um, the theory is going to explain and this you can use uh, with your students for in your class actually while you are showing this, you know, using a projector or something. Or you can also ask the student, I, I mean, you can use this as a tool to read the theory and come back to the laboratory while doing this. Uh, then, of course, there is a procedure uh, where this is about the familiarization. Uh, like I said some time back, that when we are doing this AR, VR business, and we are still saying that uh, the skills are not learned, it is not the same as doing practical, then why do we need to even have AR, VR? Why not go back to the way we learn science and I'm quite sure that most of us think that that is actually the correct way of learning science. No doubt about it because you use your hands, right? Well, the simple 
an honest reason for using AR, VR, other than making it uh, tangible and more interesting is you are saving a lot of chemicals. Because see, if we are going to do one titration, each of us is going to do five sets of cooling's. That means we are going to use 50 ml of acid and then the 50 ml of base that makes it per person for one experiment. And you consider a class of 50 students or even 100 students. It goes into liters. So if it's go if it is going into the liters, I'm not talking, I'm also talking about the cost of the environmental pollution. Because ultimately, we are putting it down the drain. So we are actually polluting the water bodies. Can we make our students so fine-tuned using the labs that we don't need a five set of units? We can stop with two. So we now know what is exactly the pink color that you look for and the exact the bullet and the pipette. They might know it in one and means we should be able to save 30 ml per student in a class of 100. Just see how many liters you have saved and how many liters of pollution we have saved. So if we come up with this and if we explain to students that this is the reason why we are doing ARPR, I'm sure the youngsters are much more uh, environment conscious and they will understand this better. Then of course there is an the animation that you have and then I'm going directly to this. So, uh, you can select the transparency or the filtration or the stability or the generality. Right? So, I'm just going to make you, I mean, I'm going to take this and what I'll do is I'll put up the link here. You go and test because we are a small group of people here. Uh, I can do that in this particular session. Normally, I don't because then... 30, 35 people doing it, then I will only not know what they are doing, right? So if it is a true solution, then if you are going to have a tindal effect, so we know that there would be a bluish cone or something like that. So you just pick it up and keep it here. And then check the information. Okay, so it is not scattered in the light, but it's what if I have a colloid and I put it here? And then you can see is it going to matter if I'm going to take a suspension? Probably again I'll have to flesh and just check. And then we may probably go to the animation part and actually see the animation. Just for how it can be steam the chat just so then explore. You can just click on that, it will take you to the same experiment. I put it up in the chat and just go and explore this and then maybe we can just come back. We also 
put up something in the corner. Can we then can we then ask them to actually do this at home because the Idle rice water can be actually used very easily. Everyone, uh, especially in South India, uh, and so that is your understanding kind of art. Uh, you want to check this out before we move ahead? Yeah, go ahead. I'll just mute myself and uh, the video is on. So just try out the OLAPS one and just. Uh, see what you Unmute and tell me uh, once you have finished the exploration so that we can go to the next website. Are you finding it useful? Okay. Yes, ma'am. It's very really useful uh, as it contains uh, even viva questions also, like feedback also, and also the other resources can be found on the same theory. Yeah, so it's yeah. nice, ma'am. OLAPS is nice. Definitely, I will use in my classrooms and uh, refer to my students. Yeah, because it, basically it is also math. So we don't have to worry about whether it suits our standard or grade or anything of that sort. So that becomes that makes it easier. Okay, so let's go to this. Gulzar, you want to say something? Go ahead and say that. Yes, ma'am. It's very useful and stimulations are there simulations are there and even the uh, theory procedures are also and real uh, uh, videos are also there so the, uh, for our large classes this is very useful because uh, we have a uh, 70 to 80 students in each class and bring everyone to lab and uh, perform experiment this is the wonderful for uh, giving a lab uh, experience yeah. okay. you're satisfied Hello, madam. Yes, 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 sir. Uh, madam, one thing, everything is nice. Madam, procedure and explanation, everything is okay. Mm -hmm. But in our government school, what is the problem now, madam? It is most of the students belongs to Canada medium. Mm -hmm. It is for English medium students, okay. But for uh, Canada medium students, for regional language, is it possible to translate anything, uh, text or I want to add to him, ma'am. Yeah. Ma um, actually, I have translated the Amrita Olaps videos in uh, our regional, uh, regional language, Canada. You can get the in uh, Canada also, sir. Great. Same Amrita oh, oh, Olaps yeah. videos are. Uh... How can we? So, get... I, I worked with the DSCRT in translating, sir. So you can get those. So even so, the uh, QR scanner is there, no, sir, in the test book itself. Hmm. So in that, if you scan those uh, QR codes, you will get the uh, Amrita. The whole app explain videos there. Ex uh, that explanation is it in? Yeah, sir. Everything is in yes. Canada. 
Okay. I will try it. Now. Yeah. So Thank actually you. speaking, thanks, Bulzar, for that because uh, usually, sir, what has happened is every SCRT okay has done this particular thing of translating it into their regional languages and it is put in the state textbooks. So the QR code usually takes it to either the Diksha content which is related in the regional language or in any other format if it is at a national level in English or Hindi, it usually is translated. And I'll go one more step ahead and I'll ask you if you find such particular things that you feel that no, we need to translate this and translate. Why don't you become the creators of the content rather than just consuming the content? That is what is actually required. And, and then like just now, how Gulzar said that I have translated it and I was a part of it. Even most of the teachers get acknowledged for that. So that is something which is very nice and it's your contribution to the area of your teaching, right? So that's something that actually gives us most satisfaction. Okay, then we go to this. This is the Smithsonian lab. Uh, I will, of course, give the link again. But I will want you to explore. I'm not going to show you anything now because there's a very small group. I'll just show that uh, this part contains resources. First of all, you have this. It's also open to the museum educators. That is why I really like this Smithsonian Learning Lab because um, I do a lot of interdisciplinary teaching. So I also have a course on the history of chemistry. I'm going to relaunch it now, uh, probably in in the upcoming months. That is 2023. I ran it once already, and it was a super hit course. I ran it for. Uh, Time, if you feel that you want to do something interdisciplinary or something like that, please definitely please get back to me. Okay, get in touch with me. We'll do something because I work a lot on that. Like, um, uh, uh, we do stuff on science and maths together. We do art with science, like uh, converting uh, STEM into STEAM. So all those courses are there that uh, I and a few of my colleagues have developed so this is there then the best part here is you can become creators that also at the united states of american smithsonian learning lab you can create this and you can share it because you can actually this is one of the most um happy things that i can say yeah i actually am using the word happy things because uh, the more set of questions, quizzes, and assignments that you can create, you make a particular uh, resource much, much more wholesome. So you may have a particular topic. You may find that, oh, I have some better questions or I have a different set of questions that are not assignments. Also, this annotations and hotspots. This is something which is really really lovely uh i'll share the link and again uh i will wait for two to three minutes will before to do excuse me ma'am explore uh, yes uh, yes uh, go ahead you told that we can uh, resource can uh, what kind of resource we can create and upload see can you see the screen you can create copy of collection. You can create some annotations and hotspots. So you have to give a particular part. You'll have to create a free account huh, first. And then you can also upload your own resources and aids that you are already using. Maybe you could have devised a particular game or something. You can just upload it. Okay, I have put the link there. So you can go there and create a free account and just in two minutes, if you can explore and come back. Because there are many more resources that I would like to share with you and uh, just see it's almost like 310. We have maybe 15, 20 minutes. So just go to that link. Explore a bit and come back. I'm muting myself. It's all right.
Hi, I'm Tony, and in this video, I'll show you some tips for searching in the Smithsonian Learning Lab. So I can see that you all are exploring. I'll stop the screen share till you're exploring. Then once it's done, you just tell me and then I'll start sharing the screen. Yes, ma'am, this is nice. We can we also get learning lab resources also there. Many things are there. When the images, all th all things. Yes, these are very good uh, resources that we have. So that's if you have explored enough. Really, should be. Uh, are you exploring still, or? Uh, and, and I actually a model collection on different topics is a colleagues also like a social teacher and other teachers also. A nice, mom. Yes. I will explore more after the session. Uh, so we have. This and let me just take it. I don't know why it's not coming, but I just type it. This is the Royal Society of Chemistry. So if you go here and again, you have huge resources. And if I'm sure you must be knowing, but Royal Society of Chemistry is the topmost uh, in the world for chemistry, right? So I just put it up in the chat and please go and explore. I put it up in the chat. And again, you have practicals, you have simulations, you have screen experiments. This is this is an amazing website. Anything and everything you want for chemistry, you will find it here. In fact, uh, every every country has got their own uh, Royal Society chapter. So you can find the closest. Uh, Royal Society chapter and also get involved with them. So I have put it up in the chat and please go ahead and find it. This is one website that you should bookmark if you are a teacher of chemistry. Because you get the professional development, as you see. So you have professional development articles for primary, secondary teachers. You have got teacher mentoring. You have got teach chemistry. You have got education in chemistry. Uh, I am right now in the resources part. But yeah, go ahead and actually explore and come up. I'm just muting.
to this one. This is an excellent simulation. Uh, this is to show trust. Okay. And why I like this is because this is so much of an ethical thing. Um, I like the way it is. Uh, I'll share the link with you all. So it's like a game and there are different types of people in the world. We'll just see. So either you cheat or you cooperate. Now I'm going to be the cooperate person. So constantly if I keep on cooperating, what's going to happen? So every time I cooperate, both of us get marks. If someone cheats, the other person gets marks. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, please wind up the session. You have only five minutes left. Yes. Yeah, yeah. it's almost the last one only we are sharing. Okay, and participants, please leave the room. Do not click on leave the session. So you can see how the score is going because the moment he cheats, I am cooperating, but the son, the person is cheating, right? So I lose marks, he gains. So this is like somewhere uh, we tell the science scientists also that would the scientist cheat? Is it good to cheat in the world? The world is made up of all types of people, right? What happens later is the greatest mark. Huge learning it is. So there are four or five different characters that come. Now this is a sleuth. Okay, so the characters and what if one goes against the other? So we're teaching probability also and this is how the uh, some chemicals react with the other chemicals but the other chemicals don't. Now, this is something which is very nice, okay? So, if all are going to cooperate, so the world is made up of cooperate people, copycats and cheaters. So, now let's see. So, see how the pink number is going to get reduced. So, people who always cooperate are actually eliminated, huh? So all, all cooperative people are dead. Now cheaters and copycats are left. So now what's going to happen? You think that only cheaters will be left? Let's see. Actually cheaters are like harming themselves. So dunya sirf cheaters pe bhi nahi chalti. Dunya sirf cooperate karne walo pe bhi nahi chalti. And who's left is basically copycats. And uh, probably that is how we can say uh, that many of many people tend to copy each other. That's like an inherited uh, type of a trait. So these are the few, okay, I wanted to give you that, right? Uh, the link to this.
And there are others, of course, uh, other very nice uh, experiments and stuff there. The lab exchange, it's called. So that is nice. All the breakout rooms are getting closed. And yeah, uh, uh, this is my website. From here, you can download certain things. Otherwise, it's just ajita.deshmuk at MIT ADT University. You can, yeah, I just put my. Thank you, madam. Thank you for your wonderful speech, madam. Thank you very much, madam. Learns a lot from you, man. Thank you so much, ma Yeah, we. Yeah, yeah, okay. We will leave the breakout room and go to the main room. Please do not leave the session. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, madam. Thank you, ma'am. Have a good day. Yeah. Have a good day to you too. Why can't I leave? I'm not able to leave the breakout room. Is that? Right? 